Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to be going over square collision detection. Not the collision response, just the detection. I'm going to make another tutorial on the response part. Figure I'd break it up into two parts. Um, just for, you know, ease of information gathering. So anyway, this program basically just detects to see if two squares or two rectangles are colliding or overlapping. And as you can see, it does that. And when it detects a collision, it draws a white outline around both of my rectangles. So pretty cool, pretty useful if you want to make a game or, I don't know, some kind of simulation with squares. Mostly, is this is just useful for making a game of some sort. So here's my program. I'm going to get right into it. I've defined a couple different variables, but I'm not going to explain all of them because, I mean, I've explained my basic layout several times, and this is the same layout I've used in my other tutorials. So if you watch them, you kind of know what's going on already. Uh, the controller object just keeps track of my mouse location or your finger touch location on the screen, on the canvas. And I use that to center the red square on my mouse pointer, as you can see there. The rectangle class is just going to be the class that defines my rectangles. So it's going to keep track of the width and height and the X and Y positions of both my rectangles, as well as the color. And it's also going to handle my drawing function for the rectangles and the collision code. So that's really the interesting one that we're going to discuss. Red and white are just my rectangle references to my red and white rectangles. Loop is the game loop and resize is just a function that resizes the screen or the canvas when the screen does resize. So as you can see, I have nice responsive canvas resizing. So but none of that's really important except for the rectangle class. So we're going to go right down to the rectangle class and get right into it. So here's my rectangle class. Um, just keeps track of the coordinates and dimensions and color, as I said. Um, here's the draw function. Just draws my rectangle to the canvas. Gone over that in previous tutorials, so I'm not going to explain how that works. And here we have the collision detection code. So... You don't really need these helper functions. All they do is get the different sides of the rectangle. So for instance, the bottom would, if we're talking about the white rectangle, it would start at the Y coordinate, which is right here, and add the height to that to get the bottom side of the rectangle. Uh, the left, if I want to get the left coordinate of my rectangle, it just literally just returns the X coordinate. These are basically just here to make the collision code look cleaner and be more comprehensive so comprehensive comprehensible one of those as you can see this is my collision code and it's really really simple just goes over four separate cases um, to see if the rectangle the red rectangle is on the four different sides of the white rectangle and that it's not overlapping on any of those sides so the first case is if the top of the red rectangle is greater than the bottom of the white rectangle, which would be this case right here. And if the top of the red rectangle is greater than the bottom of the white rectangle, we do not have a collision, obviously. Um, at this point, it's still greater than the bottom of the white rectangle, so there's no collision. And here, it is not greater than the bottom of the white rectangle, and we do have a collision. So... All of these cases are basically the same just for the different sides of the rectangle. So for instance, if the red, the right side of the red rectangle is less than the left side of the white rectangle, there's no collision. If it is, there's a collision. And it's the same for the left and the top, or whichever two cases I didn't go over. Basically, you get it. This is a really simple case of just comparing the different sides of the rectangles and seeing if there's an overlap. If any of these conditions are true, so for instance, if the bottom of the red rectangle is less than the top of the white rectangle, the rest of the conditions don't matter. If that one condition is true, then there is no collision. And that's what's great about this approach to square collision detection. It allows you to have early outs. So when test collision is called, the first thing it does is test to see if the top of my red rectangle is greater than the bottom of the white rectangle. 
So if this happens to be the case on the screen and your red rectangle is underneath the white rectangle like this, the rest of these do not get called. The only check that is done is this right here, and then your if statement ends and your collision test function returns false. And this is great if you have, say, a thousand squares on your screen and they're all testing collision. That's a lot of collision tests, and if you can cut down your your checks by three, if you can remove three checks potentially for every overall collision test, that is excellent because there's no need to test all four of these cases because any one of these cases could prove that there's not a collision. If you want to test to see if there definitely is a collision, you would have to make sure that all of these conditions are false because basically if all of these conditions are false, we have a collision and we return true. So to test for a collision, we have to test all of these cases. To test if there's not a collision, we only have to test one or, depending on the case, up to four, but as little as one in a best case scenario, which would be this right here, the red rectangle being underneath the white rectangle. So this is as simple as I could figure to make this code. Um, there might be a better way to do this. I'm not really sure if there is a more efficient way, but this is the best way I can come up with, and it's fairly efficient and a small bit of collision detection code. So figured I'd pass it on, figured it might help somebody. Um, that's really it. There's nothing more to it than that. If we come down to here, you can see I've defined the red and white rectangles, just creating a new rectangle instance. I center the white rectangle in the center of the canvas to start out. Um, here's my game loop. I'm just setting my red rectangle center coordinates to the pointer position. So whether that's a touch point or a mouse point, my red rectangle is going to be centered. Um, and here I'm using the test collision function, the red rectangle test collision with the white rectangle. And if that's the case, I simply draw two white rectangle borders around my two rectangles, which you already knew because you could see it. And that's it. That's the game loop. And down here I have that resize function, but that's not really pertinent to square collision detection. So everything you guys need to know is right here. So I'm going to post a link in the description to the source code on my GitHub and Pretty soon I'm going to have these examples up on my website, interactive for you guys to actually check out the video, check out the source code, and work with the example, the running example in your web browser all in one spot. So that's going to be great. So anyway, until then, I hope you guys go check out the source code and I hope you learn something from the video. I hope you use this code in your application. If you do know of a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.